Hello, this is Hands-On DevOps with Ansible. This is Section 4, Building and Running Docker Containers with Ansible. In this section, we'll look at building Docker containers with Ansible. We'll then run those Docker containers. We'll use Ansible to push an image to a Docker registry. We'll look at how we can deploy a rolling update to our application when it's already running in Docker as we build a new version of the image. And we'll look at how we can use Docker and Ansible to do integration testing to test our application before we deploy it. Building Docker containers with Ansible. In this video, we'll look at the Ansible Docker connector and we'll look at the Ansible Docker image module. In our previous sections, we looked at building up our application and deploying it in a virtual machine. So we used Ansible to install and configure our application. We then captured a disk image for a virtual machine. And then we deployed instances of that virtual machine to run our application. We might, though, want to construct our application in a containerized environment and run it as a container talking again to a database that would also be running in a container. If we do that, we need to think about how can we incorporate Ansible into our DevOps pipeline when the result is a Docker image and the resulting deployment is then the associated Docker container. Of course, Ansible can help us with that automation process for building containers. We have a choice up front when we talk about how we're going to build our Docker image we can either use the Ansible Docker connector or we can use the Docker image module. So let's take a look at both of those. The Ansible Docker connector, what it allows us to do is run our Ansible playbook in a Docker container. So we start a Docker container, we then run Ansible, Ansible connects in to that Docker container, it runs commands inside of it. That means we can reuse all of our existing roles, our tasks, variables, all of those things. When we're all done, we commit that container to an image, and then we tag that image and push it to a Docker registry. On the other hand, we can use the Docker image module. In that case, we start with a regular Docker file, uh, just as if we were running Docker build ourselves. But instead, we use Ansible to run that Docker build for us. Um, and that allows us to leverage things like variables, it makes it easier for us to control and get the results back from that. And then Ansible can tag that image once the Docker build is done, and it can push the result to a registry for us. Now we'll see both of those examples in the video today, but in order to talk about the Docker connector, we'll look at that first. I want to talk for a minute about exactly how that works. So usually, like when we looked at using Ansible to deploy to a remote server, building up our infrastructure, for example, or deploying things into Amazon Web Services, or when we were using Packer to build a machine image, we were using the regular Ansible SSH connector. Uh, so we had some remote server, physical or virtual, we were using SSH to connect into it, um, and then Ansible would use that connection to run remote commands. With the Docker connector, we can use all of the same Ansible tasks and roles and variables, but we're at, what's actually happening is that Ansible is running Docker exec for each one of those. So Ansible is still expecting a Python interpreter to be inside the Docker container, it, but it's expecting to run that Python interpreter using Docker exec instead of via SSH. So the effect is the same, but the uh, method of connection is a little different. And Ansible has a number of different connectors like this. When we've been working against localhost, uh, for example, to run AWS commands, we were using the local connector, and that also bypasses SSH and just runs commands directly. So let's take a look at what that might look like using the Ansible Docker connector to build a Docker image. We'll start with our playbook. So as always, we want to have a playbook for Ansible. And you can see in this case, I've identified that Docker connector. And then you notice I can just go ahead and use any of the existing roles that I have available 
that we've also used for our virtual machine builds. In order to do that, I override a couple of variables. First of all, the Docker image that I'm starting from already has Python 2 installed. My virtual machine images had Python 3, so what I'm doing here is just overriding the interpreter so it uses the standard Python interpreter instead of Python 3 for this particular Docker container. And then secondly, of course, inside a Docker container, I typically don't have systemd available. I can't deploy services. That's not really how containers are designed to work. So we just use the existing variable that we had to turn that off so we don't try to manipulate the systemd service, which of course wouldn't exist, would cause our uh, build to error out. But with those couple of variables set, you'll notice that uh, this is pretty similar to any other Ansible playbook that I've built. I'm just choosing what role to run. Now, there is one catch associated with this, which is that I have to have an existing Docker container up and running. And then after this Ansible playbook is run, it's going to be my job to commit that to an image and then to tag it and uh, push it to a Docker registry. So I'm doing that in this docker build.sh script. You can see I start with a few variables like the base image I'm going to build from and the image tag I'm going to use. And then we move on into starting a Docker container. So you can see what I'm doing here is starting my base image. I'm just having it sleep for an hour so that we can then run Docker exec using Ansible so those things happen in another run inside the same Docker container. You'll notice that I put that in this dollar sign and parenthesis. Uh, what that does is it captures the output from that command, which in the case of this docker run command is the ID of the image. So I capture that ID of the image into a variable so that I can use it to tell Ansible what to connect to. I really only need the first 12 characters, and so this is just a little bit of bash intelligence to just grab those first 12 characters. So the first thing I have to do is install rsync because I have a role that uses the synchronize Ansible module and that relies on rsync being available inside the container, so we install that. We then move on to actually running Ansible playbook itself. So uh, you can see there's quite a bit of setup that has to be done, but once that setup is complete, then we just run a standard Ansible command. But you'll notice in this case, we point it to the ID of the Docker image, the Docker container that's running. And again, that little comma is just an indication that this is a host name. Now Ansible is smart enough when it sees the connector being set to Docker in the playbook, it's smart enough to use that host name as the name of a Docker container that's currently running for the Docker exec commands that it needs to execute. So that playbook runs, and the little check items in here are just so that I can make sure that things are going well, because obviously if the Ansible playbook command fails, I want to abort the build immediately and not try to commit that to an image. Once that's done, it's just a simple docker commit command. I do set a couple of parameters like the work directory and the command that it should run, but then we just identify the container and then we identify the image and the tag. And the result is that docker has started up from the base image. We've run Ansible actually inside the docker container and then the result gets turned from a container back into an image again with our new tag. So if you're familiar with building up Docker from a Docker file, for example, obviously this looks a little different. It also acts a little different. What this does is the entire playbook that we run becomes a single layer in my Docker file system. So, you know, you're used to, if you write Docker files, having to do an install and a cleanup in the same command so that you don't have a bunch of excess stuff in one given Docker layer because that causes image bloat, causes the image to be bigger than necessary. We don't have to worry about that here because everything that we do in Ansible happens as part of a single layer. So we can do all of the cleanup at the very end and we can still get just as small of an image. Obviously on the other side, perhaps it's a little bit odd to build a Docker image this way, at least if you're accustomed to the Docker file format. So, you know, my recommendation would be if you have existing Ansible roles and tasks and playbooks, all of those things, this is a great way to leverage those to also build Docker images. On the other hand, if you already have a Docker file or you're comfortable with that format, then we can look at the other approach, which is based on using the Docker file and the Docker image module 
within Ansible. So with that said, let's jump over and we'll look at that completely separate way of doing things, which is Docker image. So again, we're moving over to a different directory within the structure of our example application. What we'll be looking at, first of all, is the Docker file. So this is a different way of building that's separate from what we've looked at so far. This is a pretty standard Docker file. You can see that from a simplicity standpoint, you know, obviously this is a simple application, so there's not much that needs to go on here. We take this ordinary Docker file and we combine it with this playbook. So this playbook is inside this deployment directory. We'll get a chance to look at the rest of this deployment directory as we start to look at deploying to Kubernetes in the next section. But for right now, we want to focus on this Docker image module. So you can see that we identify a path. So this is the parent directory, and that tells Ansible exactly where to go to get the Docker file. We also tell it the name of the image that we're building. And, you know, one really nice thing about doing this in Ansible, even though we're just using Ansible to run Docker build, is that we can use a variable to identify things like the name, the specific tag, all of that kind of information. We can leverage our Ansible variables in order to do this. We can also leverage some Ansible capabilities in terms of storing our Docker login credentials in the vault and then using those to log in so that we can do a push to our registry. So those are some things that, you know, even though we're using a Docker file, there's still a significant advantage to using Ansible to kick off that build process. And then finally, we do a deploy. You can see here that's based on the Kubernetes command. And you can look forward to seeing that in the next section when we look in detail at how we can deploy to Kubernetes from Ansible. So those were our two methods. If I quickly summarize those, we have the Ansible Docker connector, and the methodology here is that we use our existing Ansible playbooks and roles and tasks. We run a Docker container. We use Ansible to run things inside that container to install and configure software. And then we use Docker commit to capture that container back to an image, tag, and push. On the other side, the Ansible Docker image, we're actually writing a Docker file and then we're using Ansible to run that Docker build command for us. And the advantage there is that uh, we can configure and customize the behavior using Ansible variables, which is obviously very flexible. And then we still, at the back end, we can have Ansible actually tag and push the resulting image for us. And again, we can leverage those variables. So that's our look at building Docker containers, Docker images using Ansible.